been talking about airflow and measuring airflow, static pressure. Now, I've been in the business about 18 years. Uh, nobody's ever really taught me all of this. Uh, I took the initiative and started learning this about a year ago. I've talked to a few people that were able to explain it to me in a way that I can understand it. So today we're going to make a video and try to go over this, uh, try to go over what static pressure is. Uh, hopefully I can explain it in a way that everybody's going to understand. We'll give it a shot. Here we go. Let's look at a blower motor. Uh, a blower assembly is designed to push a certain amount of air a certain distance in a certain time uh, using a certain amount of power. All right. Just like our little guy here, uh, he can push a certain number of boxes, a certain distance, and a certain time. Alright, so at, at its peak performance, it can do this no problem. Uh, it's not going to strain a bit. Not an issue. Alright, let's look at the next one. Same guy. still push the same number of boxes but now we've added two boxes now anything over five he can only push five boxes anything over five becomes a resistance so as he's pushing these two boxes or these five boxes I mean to the finish line I've got two boxes that's pulling him back this way this is resistance going to make it a little bit harder for him to get to the finish line. Alright, take it one more step. Now we've got the same guy who's got, he still can push the same number of boxes, but now he's got five boxes pulling him back. He's not a very happy camper right now. He's going to do it, but he's going to give it his all. He's going to really struggle. So what we need to look, how we get a look at this is I mean, a blower motor is designed really to run at about 0.5 CFM and it can get its job pretty done pretty good at 0.5 CFM. That's this guy here. We got five boxes, 0.5 CFM. Now when we start adding restrictions to the system, that's here. We're adding restrictions. I've still got to move a certain amount of air, but now I've got this restriction that's holding me back. And now we're going to look at this. If you measure your static pressure, and it's a 0 0.7, I'm designed to push 5. I'm going to push 5, but I'm going to have 2 holding me back. That's going to make it harder for me to get my job done. And if you've got the crazy static pressure of 1 inch water column, that's 10. 1.0, we got, we're still going to push our half of that, 5, but then we've got 5 that's pulling us, too. He's going to do it, but he's going to struggle really hard. Now we're going to take this one step further. Now we're going to have a little relay race here. I've got this guy that's really fit in shape. He's going to push these 5 boxes the halfway point and then from there this guy is going to take off push his five boxes to the finish line now both guys is trained for this it's not going to be much effort for them uh, they can do this no problem but now the competition is getting a little scared so we're going to cheat a little bit they're going to tag we're going to have two kids come over here and try to stop him from pushing the box to here so i've still got to get here in a certain time if these guys are slowing this guy down to get to this finish line, this guy can't possibly finish here in time. So basically, this guy is going to finish no problem. This guy is going to get to the midsection, but he's going to have to work a lot harder. So it's going to kind of ruin the time for the whole team. Alright, so let's compare this to our furnace system. This is my return. Midway points my furnace and my coil. Then my supply and ultimately be my registers out here at the finish line. So the starting point would be my return air drills. 
and you've got your duct work, that's the road, and you got your furnace and coal, that's where you transfer it over to the supply. It finishes it. Now, if I didn't have these two guys here restricting my airflow, just like the racers doing the relay, my air is going to go into my return air grill. It's going to go through the furnace and come out to the supply, no problem. All right. Now, just as soon as I start adding restrictions to my return, ultimately it's going to affect my end result. Air is going to go slower through the system. Uh, it's just not going to perform as well as it would as if I didn't have the restrictions. So what we want, now you would, ideally you would like to try to get like a, we'll just say a 0.1 inch water column on the return. You have a filter here. You want a 0.1 inch on it. And you have a coil, we'll just say, you no, know, 0.2 inch on your coil then your supply we want another point one inch if you add all these together uh, two three four five that gives me my point five inches water column now if we start adding resistance just like we did in our race up here if I add point one inch and then we turn air duct, whether it be the registers or the takeoffs or an extra elbow, whatever the case may be, and we use a thicker filter, we add another 0.1 inch here, we're going to add that to the bottom line. So now where we had 2, 3, 4, 5, now we're going to have to add the other 2, 6, 7. So now we're up to 0.7 inches of water column. So I guess the ultimate question is, is what exactly uh, is the resistance? Well basically it's pretty easy. Besides the furnace, it's everything. The coil, duct work, we'll say coil, duct work, supply pipes, uh, registers. Takeoffs. Uh, I mean everything. Everything that's hooked to this furnace or to this ductwork ultimately ultimately be will be a uh, resistance. Same thing when you return. Uh, takeoffs, grills, whatever the case may be. Everything that hooks up to this ductwork is going to be a resistance, and that is basically static pressure. Your filter is going to be a static pressure. You're going to have a resistance going through that filter. So that's going to be measured by static pressure. Your coil, I have to blow air through this coil. There's going to be resistance here. That's going to be measured in static pressure. So when you're designing the system, you want to read the product data of all the takeoffs, elbows, everything, your supply duct work, just everything, and you want to try to achieve a certain total static pressure. Alright, now that we have a slightly better understanding of what static pressure is, when we go to the service calls that have low airflow or airflow issues, uh, we can start isolating the problems as long as we know where to take our measurements. And I'm going to do a video on that and show you where to take the measurements uh, to determine whether it's the return set, if it's a filter, if it's a coil, if it's a supply. Uh, just a few quick measurements to tell us where the problem is, then we have to start looking and isolating the problem. But, you know, this is the first step. We have to understand what the static pressure is. We have to, we have to look for it. So, hopefully this helped someone out. Uh, it helped me. I get a little bit better understanding of it now. Uh, 
make my job a little bit easier. Thanks, guys.